agenda items that we need to sift through. We really don't have anything on the agenda. We've got two resolutions. Um, we understand. Um, we we do have. Uh, we've got appointments, council appointments to two boards that have never met, but we got to have them staffed. Uh, Joe Molitor is uh, is leaving or has left his position that got him on the stormwater violations board. We had to have an industrial somebody. <clears throat> and Jim Price is, uh, uh, was the one that was the, the chamber president year before last. Is that uh, old NCR? Old iconics. Yes, Iconics. Yeah. He said he, you could put his name on if you what, you're okay. We're changing from iatric to iconic, so it's still in the I family, so it's okay. all. <clears throat> I can't keep track of the business names anymore. They all start with a vowel. The Stormwater Violations Board, where we have to have an engineer, uh, Jeremiah Davis says he, he'd be willing to go another term. So, <clears throat> and there are not a lot of engineers out there. With that, so. Uh, so, those are the if we're looking for somebody, which I think we are. So the person feels the slot that he needs to fill. The person fills the slot that he needs to Jim Price. The seat requires it to be a regulated industry or commercial operation. So I can't fit that requirement. Okay. Um, I like the reason. I'm familiar with what Tony said, but they don't have any meaning because regulations in the state are so strict. You're not going in. That way you see it coming. Yeah, uh, that, that's the thing. We, we've only had one challenge in my time here, and that's when council was the appeals board. And so, yeah, I don't, I don't foresee that they're going to, uh, to have a lot of business ahead of them. Two resolutions. One uh, is the keep the pool at the park, and the other one is the, the fire fitness uh, test, fireman fitness test that we. The chief presented to us at a work session a couple of council meetings back. So, are, are there any questions or concerns about that? Either one of those? Uh, well, that involved, we have, we're going to, well, that involved your possibly going to Nashville at some point in time. Of the Anchor oh. Creek. Oh, good. I mean, if it does, I'll get it. I was hoping you would. see how that works out. We kind of try to push for that. All right. Um, any other items off the agenda that questions about? We uh, One is the grant for the Greenway, the next leg of that. And uh, police department got two, two items, two promotions. on the grant and we'll tell you where we stand. Council's already approved the application for this grant. We've sent it to the state. The state has awarded the grant. And then they had some turnover and people were working virtually and not in the office. And although it has been four months, they still have not gotten us the contract. They promised they would have it to us today. They do not at this point in time have the contract. The Greenway is approximately a million dollars, the amounts on your agenda. The local match is 5%. I would like for council to consider that you go ahead and approve the contract. It's the same contract as we used in the previous phase with TDOT. You're not going to negotiate with TDOT on, on the terms. And uh, leave it subject to legal review to make sure we've got all the necessary things so that we can save three weeks of getting the documents turned around and getting into the environmental phase of the uh, of the project. If you'd prefer to wait until the next meeting, we can do so, but you're not going to gain anything that I'm aware of in terms of leverage or ability to change the contract. So in other words, approving it, you'll be ready when they are, will be already ready. Okay. And the 
fail safe would be, of course, that the uh, legal counsel will look at if there's anything there. But again, this is a standard TDOT contract. We have many of them, and I don't think there will be anything to challenge or, or things that we, we really want to challenge. But that's, I uh, apologize and, and I'm very upset to let that be known to the staff in Nashville that. Uh, we, we need better responsiveness for, for projects, but uh, I'd like to keep this all going if we could. Is that on the same side of the street? Basically, it goes from where the, the parking lot is, where it ends now, to Davis Street, going, going on down Or I guess it's Buffalo Trail. See that our returning cruise ship participant is on his way across the hall. Has he got a funny looking hat on or my time is in? Well, I can't tell if there's any new <laughs> tattoos. Can <laughs> <laughs> you cross the date line? Yeah. You might have your ear ring you no. Know. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so if y'all don't have a concern with it, that will be my recommendation for the uh, Do you have any slides of your vacation? Oh, sure. yeah. <laughs> All right. The, uh, as you know, we are preparing. I spent the, the three-day weekend working feverishly trying to get ready for our uh, upcoming retreat uh, beginning Friday. Uh, we need to send in hard confirmations on rooms. We need to know we're all on board. We're all going to be there. And Friday, anyone have conflicts or concerns? Chris, go on. Yeah, yes, okay, good. Awesome. Thank um, you. Well, this will be our sixth consecutive year, so we it always works out pretty well. Okay, Cindy, now's the time for the handout if you can. Um, you may or may not have heard there has been a, a problem at the, uh, the library with the, not yesterday's snow, but the previous snowstorm. They had a sheet of ice on the roof that came down and knocked the gutter loose from the building. What you have is an estimate to repair the gutter. I have received uh, inquiry from Hamlin County asking if we would be willing to split the bill 50-50, meaning that our cost would not exceed 5300 That is within uh, my authority to move forward, but I wanted to get uh, council's approval before we uh, engage in an agreement with the, the county to fix the, the library's gutter. What's the second price, Tony? Uh, that was a more extensive uh, doing more than just repairing the damage. So I, I think the, uh, the recommendation from the county was to, to do the, the small one and then let the library will consider additional things that may be needed in the future. Is the second one, though, coming? The county is that do anything. determined by the company who evaluated the status? Is that something that needs to be fixed that if not addressed will be worse later? Yes, I think that uh, it is It's an area that, that should be addressed based on the recommendation of the roofing company, but that is, uh, is not something. This is all I've gotten in terms of uh, what it is other than pictures of the damage. So I didn't know if you all on the board had been, been briefed. And, and we haven't had a meeting. Is Deborah here? Finance? Have you been briefed on this? But I'm not chairman of the building and the grounds and I would read that to be that maybe that's not a 24-gauge uh, guttering that it should be if you want to replace it with what's something that would do better. That, I think you're right. It's all guttering. 28 though. Well, I think the 28, it says, remaining roof areas, in other words, replace all of it. Not damaged. I mean, my concern was it's damaged to the roof, and a roof leak would be even more to repair. I think I think we need to call, don't you think, Deborah, and, and get an explanation on that? I mean, it needs to be replaced. I think we could go ahead and do that and have now, but make sure that that's not something that we should do. Yeah, I'm surprised that y'all weren't brought into the woods.
So I got some insurance reimbursement out of that. That sounds like something that could be an insurance claim. I think it needs to be fixed and then a claim can be filed. Yeah, I, I just seem like we can get some reimbursement there out of, after a deductible on a, is that, is that our building or is that one we own? The county is sitting on it. Yeah, well, it's really right. steeded to the library, but the county is sitting within the county. Who carries insurance on it? We have an insurance company. You have to carry your own insurance? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't think that so. That would be a covered. Yeah, I, I would think so. So you want to let the board meet, let the county commission meet, and then, then decide where we're going. But you're comfortable if I identify $5,300 to move forward? I would like to answer if it's been filed under insurance. With the contingency going ahead, if you go ahead and direct get it fixed and then file your insurance, I mean, in the process, I mean, but I mean, we could go ahead and say that we'll pay it if we get Oh, yeah, we'll go ahead and say that we'll pay it. Yes. Authorize him to move forward. But I would want to, I would think an adjuster would want to look at it before yeah. the repairs were made. It didn't have any of those fancy heat cars on it. <laughs> All right, so we'll move forward with that. I'll look for some more feedback. I'll uh, let the county know the kind of conditions and that the library will be meeting. So Tuesday, a week from today. Okay. Yes, um, a couple of other small things. The uh, not small, but uh, no longer a big issue. I think that uh, y'all saw from my report on Friday. The city had filed with the comptroller on the. Uh, exemption to the code of regulations from the state when the Supreme Court uh, knocked down the federal mandates there's no longer a conflict I consider that issue to be moot and uh, we're, we're not moving forward with any more planning or uh, uh, preparation to do testing of employees uh, as we stand now we'll comply with the state law which is generally don't ask, don't tell with regard to vaccination status. We are experiencing tremendous uh, absences due to COVID. Uh, we had a peak of 24 on uh, last week. At the end of the week, we were down to 19. And I've not gotten today's update because the person who gives me the update is out with a COVID contact. Uh, but uh, we are seeing extensive problems with people that are coming into contact and are not vaccinated, which means they need to, uh, to be isolated. We're seeing breakthrough cases where the uh, uh, people who are vaccinated are still getting milder cases of the disease. Uh, so we are having uh, real issues operationally. I suspect that this week will be worse. All the uh, information that I have heard uh, anecdotally indicates that we're in for another three weeks or so before this thing really plateaus. Uh, we were behind some of the northeastern states from picking up this spike, but uh, this one will probably roll for another, another while longer. Again, the numbers from the hospital indicate that of those that are in ICU that are, are significantly sick from this round, 75% or so are not vaccinated. That's who are the ones that are getting significantly sick. And uh, there are some, I guess, safe to say backlogs at the hospital trying to get people in, both from rooms and staffing shortages. So uh, trying to swallow this one's a little harder, uh, but we're, uh, we're trying to go through. But the tools that we have available to us are limited by this actions of the state legislature, so that's kind of where we stand. We have 57 cases in the hospital. You're right, those that are in ICU libraries are not vaccinated. <clears throat> we found out yesterday that the two uh, injections that give you the antibodies are not, you can't get them in Tennessee anymore. They're not shipping them at all. And they're concentrating on two oral medications <clears throat> that they can't really get. And they're, they're 
focusing on the Omicron when it's the Delta that we're still getting. So it's, it's a medication is a problem, you know, whether or not it's a problem. Well, didn't we get the link on how to order the home tests? Is that just one out? Yeah, that, that was came out this afternoon on how to do that. So I imagine there'll be a big rush on, on that. So. I thought the health department here was getting around. The health department, the, the rapid tests, the last report I got, they were running low in their supply and expected to run out. They are still doing in-person tests on Tuesdays and Thursdays. Uh, and if you're involved with the city, you can still get an appointment and be tested at the clinic. So there are still ways to find out. That, uh, the schools are out too. They're out of testing. Who are these people that are testing like next to El Chirito, the old bank building there, and there's a couple other places uh, that they've got signs of. You say the old bank building, you're talking about there across where CBS yes. is that close to your office? Yes. Place? Yes. Well, I've heard some horror stories out of there. They're not Is that what it is? Because the other, one day last week, they were lined out clear to the street. Yeah. Uh, and then there's another one uh, next to Lowe's at the old bank building behind the urgent care. Well, I, I have seen that one there. I didn't know that's what they did. Yeah, that's the latest one that I've seen. I, I've heard that safety and precautions are out the window at that place over there on East AJ. Is that some business license they have to get for that? Or what? See, do they need a business license? They probably do, yes. I'd have to look. Of course, remember the state took over business license and took it away from the local localities that might see what was going on. So, well, I'll have to check down to see if they have one, but we can't enforce it. So it, it, we can follow up and see, but I'll, I'll I, I just saw, I was there. surprised the other day when I saw probably 20 or 25 people standing in line out the door. Yeah. Now where is this again? Uh, across from CBS, next to El Chirito Mexican restaurant, East End, East, 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 East AJ. Across from the it's that intersection of East Asia. Is it used to be okay. Hall, but it's, it's yeah, in right Hall right now. Across, yeah, okay. right across the Yeah, okay. Caddy walks to Wall Street. I mean, from the CBS. I thought <laughs> those two are across the street from one another everywhere. So yeah, exactly. <laughs> you say one, you say another. That's right. Now, too. But COVID continues to be a concern. I advise you all to. Use the standard precaution. You know, it's, uh, as I indicated, we do have uh, right through cases of people who are vaccinated that are still getting testing positive, getting sick. They're not getting terribly sick. They're not not the people that are, are really having trouble. But there are people that are out there, both that have been vaccinated and those that have had it before. Those things are not keeping you from getting the new variant. There's a lady in our neighborhood who has been vaccinated and had the booster. She has COVID now for the third time. Third time. Let me add that I went to a facility here in town and they didn't take my insurance and they didn't tell me that until after they sent me a bill. To do what? To be tested? Yeah, I went there to be tested. And they well, didn't tell me they didn't take my insurance. So it might be something I want to ask specifically. Yes, does that fall under that new surprise bill legislation that is uh, our surprise bill law that uh, prevents insurance companies, or prevents health care providers from, uh, they just call them surprise bills. There was quite a bit of news coverage, but you might have been on the cruise at the time. <laughs> this <laughs> last week. Well, out. what happened actually was I went one time and didn't get a bill. And then I went back again months later, and they sent me a bill, and I went back and asked them about it, and they went back and billed me for the first one. So I Honesty is not the best part. And that wouldn't happen to me, you wouldn't, Bob. <laughs> uh, what, I, I mentioned this because I, I, I attended one of the, the public uh, 
public hearings they had on it, and that's. Uh, So I, I bring this up because I went to one of those public input sessions, and that's our post-council work session today on what the OT is coming with what they have uh, decided to recommend on South Cumberland with uh, rearranging uh, traffic flow and, and traffic signals and, uh, and landscaping and those things. I, I, be interested to see what they come with because they had some of it at the public information. Uh, did you were you at that Deborah when they were here? I was here. I'll be in this that's I think that's gonna be some improvements out of town. It's funny that the state responsible for that section street. They're responsible for the pavement. Just the pavement? Just the pavement. They, they've made it very clear that they're not responsible for things like sidewalks if they're not there. If there was a sidewalk, they would replace it or, or bring it up to standard. So there'll be, we'll talk about this after the, the presentation and we've got some time to look at other funding sources. The state is willing to work with the sum, but they basically, it's a state route and they're worried about the block. Well, now, is that like the all the way to Buffalo Trail that they've done before? Yeah, it goes from 25 to 25, so, so it's the whole, the whole area, so, and uh, we'll, we'll talk about some opportunities there, but they do, I think they will have a good report, I think you'll, you'll be impressed with some of the ideas, and I encourage you to, uh, to hang around and make sure that you uh, hear that presentation, and Steve, we try to get them to get it down to about 15 to 20 minutes is, is the game plan. Yes. Given the hopefully short agenda, they should have plenty of time to uh, be able to make that decision. The paving is involved with what they're talking about. Is widening on the this end anything? Basically, the, the, their recommendation will come from, uh, from 160 and go to about here. It doesn't go all the way down. So we, they did some, some studies of, of uh, crash data, I know, here at the at second. But most of the recommendation goes to, to Morris, is where the, the meat of their recommendations will be. Steve, I noticed uh, where you give us some pictures of where some of the paneling had fallen off the front of the old belt building. I drove by there today and saw that all of it is off, has been removed. Are they uh, any updates on that? Um, yes. Uh, you're, it's the paneling above the windows that were kind of a safety issue. We were worried about falling on people. There's still a number of panels in there. Um, they, you know, they took the panels off, and actually the brick looked pretty good. I was surprised at how well it looked. And all they did was splash some concrete and attach the, the panels. So taking that off, it, it looked good. Right now, uh, like I said, they took the panels off for, for life safety purposes, but. Uh, they're going, to, they're going to come back with a plan. Now, we had facade grant money that they could use, so uh, we said we wanted a plan from them. They're, they're talking about painting the brick or putting stucco, which I hope they don't do. But they're, they're working on a plan right now. Now, one of the problems is that the owner who's been working with us now has COVID. And it's kind of limited to what she can do. Steve, I know some wood up there, too. It looks like they covered some windows up or something. I mean, the brick is there, but then there's some wood up there also. You know up above, uh, yeah, I think that's the bottom of the window sills. I wonder if that was what they were. And I think that's steel, actually. I think oh, that's is it? Instead of wood. Or they had the old transom windows. That's what I think. It's hard to tell because, you know, they bricked and re-bricked. Right. And, yeah. But it may be the bottom of the, the window. I thought it might be the window, but I, I couldn't tell. I'm hoping we can convince them to take the, the, the metal siding off, too, as part of this. But, because you know, really the issue is water's getting underneath. The roof is leaking, and it's tr tr trickling down behind those panels. Even behind the green panel? Yes, and then it, then it was getting behind the... 
I don't know what that was, whether those were granite or what they were, but... It was stone or something. Yeah. Like that. I mean, and, and they popped off, you know, when we had that snow, it melted, water got behind, then it froze, and it just popped it. And when those fell, they were substantial. There's a lot of... Yeah, those panels probably weigh at least 100 pounds apiece. So when we pointed out to them, they did get on it and remove the, the elements so that that danger wouldn't be there going forward. But uh, the game plan of how it's going to get fixed back is still uh, an ongoing conversation. Where are they on the plan for the inside? Uh, inside the, the belt park belt. belts. Mm -hmm. uh, I know they've had a couple meetings with some developers out of Knoxville about possibly purchasing the buildings uh, and just kind of wait to see where that, that goes. But uh, they themselves probably won't redevelop the building. They'll, they'll try to do what they can to secure it, fix the roof. They've got a state grant to help pay for the, the roof. That's probably going to run about three hundred grand before it's all said and done. Uh, so they get the building secured and I've been inside the building other than the third floor you know where there was some uh, damage in the ceiling it, it's a solid building but they do have plans for the roof we've got they've got a, a partial grant that'll help offset some of those costs right. and they've also got a facade grant through our CDBG for for some of those costs that they're talking about moving to the facade now so. right, they got Michael Price uh, doing the uh, to work on because uh, when they take the roof off, there may be uh, some damage to the, the roof support itself that's going to have to have work done. But they, they won't know that until they take the roof off. So Michael Price is designing to basically replace the whole deck and the roof. It is a pretty solid building. I watched it there and uh, I may have told you before, Miss Ann Mitchell said, and you know Miss Annie. Electric. When she was a little girl, John Philip Sousa's band, the entire band was on the second floor there. And the children turned out to go see it, but her mother made her stand on the corner there by the Bank of Commerce because she was afraid the building would collapse with all the band members in it. But it was to John Philip Sousa. Hey, the roof is completely gone, is that correct? It, it's in bad shape. I don't know if it's completely gone, but it, you know, it's to the point where they're going to have to replace the whole thing. Least, it? Yeah. At least the back corner does, but we know it leaks in the front too because that's the reason why we're having the drainage issues. But Belk is better than Bradley. Bradley's gone. Yeah, they say. Yeah. <clears throat> the, Neither one of them will catch on fire. <laughs> <laughs> <They're boys. laughs> but yeah, I mean, uh, Tony's right, the park belt building is, is, is solid. It, other than, you know, the back portion of the roof, I didn't really see any issues. And then hopefully when they take the roof off, the, the substructure won't be as bad as it could be. So we'll, we'll wait. But I know one of the problems is they're having difficulty finding anybody to do the roof work. It's like everything. Hard to find people to do construction. I tell you a little history about downtown. You walk down there a lot. I know you're interested in it, but hey, you remember when Carlisle had the piano business down there? Well, that was a real old business. And back when they would first built it, they didn't have electric motors. So there's a six inch water main with a valve on it. It goes under that building, and the water pressure will take the elevator up to the second, third floor. And then when they want to let it down, they open the valve where it drains out and goes back down. It's still down there, it's still in operation. Well, there were, uh, they, well, not many people know that, but they, uh, they then when they got electricity and everything like that. But it showed you how ingenious people had to be back when they had to do everything by muscle. I told my cows to keep that valve closed. <laughs> <laughs> It's tied to a meter. I bet mean, he goes and opens it up. No, there's no meter there. <laughs> <laughs>
Well, like I said, the, the workshop, I, I encourage you to, to hang around. Hopefully the meeting will be brief and we can uh, get into that, that soon, but they'll be uh, putting on a pretty good show about the recommendations for them. That's all I've got. Unless Brian has anything else anybody else wants to. If we had, um, we could we uh, have a floor, a COVID floor, and we could open up another part, but we don't have the staff for it. Right. We have some nurses that are um, <clears throat> leaving and doing traveling because they can make up four hundred and forty-eight dollars an hour. Good. You can bring home five hundred, five thousand to six thousand dollars a week traveling, and but some of them, it's you know, it sounds good and it works for a while, but then being away it doesn't work. But that's. As a nurse right now, you could, uh, or nurse practitioners too, they're in such demand, and there are not enough of them turning out. Same thing with certain specialties among the doctors. There are 5,000 GI openings, gastro doctors that are needed, and there are only 200 that are coming out of school. Tell me what's the, what's the status of the old hospital I'm trying to take away. I understand that there are interested buyers, but I don't know if it's been closed. You know, we found out about that yesterday, too. The interesting thing in that, because we got it, people think that you can move right into it. But they also put deed restrictions. There's nothing that's in, that health care can go into that. And we just learned that. I just learned that yesterday. So there I, are a lot of deed restrictions. I suspect the highest and best use of that would be uh, senior level. That would be the, the normal thing to go into. I'm not certain that's what they're, they're shopping it for, but that's, that's what we're well, That's what it was first. It wasn't a hospital. Originally, originally it was a nursing home. Wasn't it? Dr. Lynch yeah. built a nursing home, yes. Mm -hmm. Good location. Yep. So it can't be a hospital. We can quell that one. The hospital can't buy it. If the hospital bought it, the only thing we could turn it into would be a parking lot. Now you're talking about the old Hamlin. Old, old uh, Lake Lakeway. Lakeway. Oh, old. Old uh, Lakeway. Old Lakeway. They use for healthcare? Well, it's like a non-compete agreement, only they wrote it into the deed. They can be sold, but nothing pertaining to hospital health care, doctor's <coughs> offices, what well, can be in there. And I didn't know, Tommy, you could do that. Yeah, you could. Sure did uh, probably decrease the value of the property. Well, yeah. it but they didn't want, you know, yeah. they didn't want Marshall Hanley to expand. You, you can't trust health care. <laughs> Al knows that. <laughs> That's right. I'm just joking. Yeah. Just joking. The regulation on the number of beds is a tough, tough fight. Any time that you get into talk, talk about increasing or changing, that gets to be a bloody war. Well, I was asked today about uh, when I was going into uh, the Bellwood Road development. The I don't know if he's publicly announced any of them. We do have a sit-down restaurant at least one of them. I don't know. Do you have any idea of what's released publicly? Well, you know, the site plan that we had for the three buildings and the, the building in the middle says Cheddar's right across it. So that's yes, the only thing I know that's public. Publix. Publix had a content. They, uh, do you have something on them? No, Publix. No, when I say open to the public, not Publix. Oh, I'm sorry. Public. The grocery store had a contract at one time with real estate on the east end and they dropped it and said that they were going on the west end. Now that's just realtors talking. I heard that and, and I've heard two or three different sites. So maybe we're going to get three publics. <laughs> well we do know that Arby's is going in the old sagebrush for a Yes. Yeah. Is it going to take up the whole thing? No. It's I basically where the restaurant was. Okay. Yeah, just the footprint. I mean, there's a whole lot of property left. That's what I thought. That there's surely that's still big enough for a Chick Fil A. Is it? Are they going to subdivide that? I mean, it's torn off now, right? 
Yes, I, I assume so. In fact, uh, I think that lot goes down and stops about 60 feet or so on the other side of that car wash on that convenience store up towards the restaurant. I think there's there's some significant space on the east side of that old car wash. But it's not part of that. I think it's part of the, the old convenience store car wash. Cause I never want to put that store in there. <laughs> but that was part of that. Don Bunch is the one that put that in there. Yeah. We had a homeless person set up a camp. Yeah. Right in the middle of that. They like right that third parking lot. Yeah. Yeah. Right the VA's light. I thought maybe there might have been a plug there somewhere around there. I wonder. <laughs> and I saw them. They brought a U-Haul in there and moved him out. Yeah. I don't know before they started construction on the yeah. turn the building down. Some homeless person needed a U-Haul to move all his stuff? Yeah, that's good. He had a good collection of stuff. I don't know where he put it. I think they're gone. I think they're the U-Haul people get their money on the front end? <laughs> Just uh, happening out by the uh, fire station on 160. Is that a hunger that they're grading for out there? It's oh, like grading 160 right oh. behind Alpha. That's the Mill Ridge subdivision. Um, the Wild Brothers or Boys now Construction. This, this is, if you're just looking at the, uh, the fire station itself, right over to the right, right as you come across the bridge where the new J turns are. Up there to the right seems to be some clearing, some dirt moving. They've been working on that for a while, haven't they? They have. I didn't know what was going on. No, no, it's, no. it's, uh, it's uh, where you turn up to Colgate or it's close to that. Yeah, they're, they're grubbing in there, but they're not. They don't have to put plants. I figured they were just dumping their dirt from somewhere else or something. The weather would cooperate, it would go a lot better. It's up to the detention pond. Now, the set bell would, does it come all the way out to the man of the circle there? Right. The, they'll be able to have a, a frontage road from Bellwood to Kibbles Ridge. It'll create Kibbles a new Ridge. Full, Kibbles Ridge traffic line will have another extension off. Like if you were coming down Kendall's Ridge and stopped at the traffic lights, you could go across right. AJ Highway on into they're going to build a road out. Oh, that way. Okay. They're taking out that building behind the big old house. They could take it out the big old house. The house is coming out. And yeah. I don't know about the building behind. That was something that was right. being debated. So I don't know. That's I was wondering about the there's real. There's safe light, and then there's a building behind it. Real. And there's a guy that's got a motorcycle. Shop back there. It's got the nicest man cave you ever seen in your life. <laughs> I mean, it, it, it certainly got expensive too. It? It, it, it is nice. I'm telling you. Who is that? Who is that? Shop? He's a, a policeman in Knoxville or something. Eddie, Eddie Freeman. Who? Eddie Freeman. Eddie Freeman. That's right. Frank's brother. Yeah. Eddie Where does he? Is he in Jefferson Knox County Police? Yes, he's Jefferson County Sheriff. Park. Yeah, Sheriff's Park. But he's supposed to be a real Mechanical motorcycles yeah. and stuff yeah. like that. Have you been in that main? Cave? I haven't been in it. No, I think my husband has, but I've not. Oh, you didn't get the car. I know, yeah. The girl's loud. The girl's loud. That house south of there, that was the second house on Manly Circle there. It looks like it needs to be torn down. Is that going to. I think it's in the county. It is. Yeah. Is that part of the development? It's an eyesore, but it's not. I don't think it goes that far. Oh, you don't think it goes over the man of You know, there's a, there's a telephone place there on the corner. Of, yes. Big yeah. purple oh. pennant yeah. <coughs> Is it? Is it getting that? that? I think that's where the road will go, come through, yes. I mean, uh -huh. we haven't seen any sort of design on that, uh, yeah. but we know it's coming. The only thing they Frank's been focusing and is on the Bellwood section for now. I bet the McGuffins will find a way to get rid of that house. Yeah. 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 But I do think it, it, 
that lines right up with the, the signal at Kidswell Ridge, and that's where the road's going to go. It's, real, it's going to be real close to that Manly Circle road. Said, uh, we haven't seen anything on that yet. Like he's focusing on where he's got those tenants right now, and I'm sure once he gets that done, he'll focus on punching the road through. I want you to know that green light in front of Arrow Hill, not Arrow, that's right near your, your place. When you're coming from Knoxville at night, it's almost like the green light is a flood light. It's the brightest <laughs> green light I've ever seen. Oh, I think it says go turn left and make a reservation or something. Yeah. <laughs> right, right, right. Are they going to extend that? Tennessee's more restrictive on that than, than other places that I have been. But, uh, we, that's what the comprehensive plan is for. But, uh, the, the state is much more friendly to the landowner and the developer than, than many. Over the flood and that own um, Winslow, the Kentucky boys. Oh, yeah, man. Did they sell that just recently? Uh -huh. Yeah. Mr. Hurley no longer owns the land. That's the reason something's happening there. Right. Well, there was something that was in one of your updates that said something about connecting it over to Fairmont. Yes, the road, the concept plan that was approved a decade ago includes going from uh, what is that, MLK back to Fairmont through through the development. Now, we've not seen subdivision <coughs> plan yet for, for that. And then how would that come up to, it had to come up to AJ to get to Fairmont, right? Or Fairmont? No, no, no. There's another Fairmont. Come in by the, the 
chicken plant. I mean, by the chicken plant. By the real so road. it stays on this side of the road. Well, see, at one time, there was a, there was a plan to go across where Carl Storms, you know, places that go through there and come out yes. at Crescent Center. And I was that thinking, was surely. That's all the over the railroad. Yes, yes. yes. The road to nowhere. Yes. Yeah. Expensive no, road to no, nowhere. No, they're not across the railroad. Good. Oh, that was Jim Crump. It, it was. Yeah. yeah. I think it's going to take out a good section of the Citizen Tribune. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they got a reaction as well. As best I recall. You probably recall that better than I was. You close to do it. And, uh, Harley had mentioned that to Jack at one time. And it was, uh, yes, it didn't go well. Harley didn't come back to town for a while after that. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be a good side of the foot, no chicken. Yeah. We get Tyson to come up. Yeah.